Good morning, everybody. Today is day two of my vlog every day challenge, and it is Monday, January 18th, 2022. The time is just before 7 a.m. I am just waiting to get into the gym. It doesn't open until 7. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you all about my goals for this year. So I have many, many goals. I have a few bigger goals and lots and lots of little goals. Um, I thought instead of just making this a regular talking head in one location video, I would try to break it up, um, film in a couple different spots, maybe make this a little more entertaining for you all. So um, for my first sort of set of goals, my first little cluster of goals for this year, I thought I'd film in the gym. I don't know if I'll be able to. It looks like there are quite a few cars here today. Um, usually by the end of the week, I'm the only one in the gym, but it's Monday, so it might be a bit busier. It might not be possible, but uh, I'll film my workout in case you guys wanted to watch that a little bit, and I will talk to you later. home from the gym. That was a short and sweet workout. This is a deload week for me. So weights are pretty low relatively. Um, the work is like general volume. Overall volume is low. But yeah, nothing crazy. Um, it's a good workout. It's quick. The gym was super busy for that gym at least. Like I said, usually there is, I'm the only one there, but today there were like, I don't know, six people there, which felt pretty busy. Anyway, um, that being the case, I didn't want to record any spoken video. They sort of look down on filming in general at the gym. So I will get back to goal setting for 2022 at a later time today at a different location. See ya. So that didn't quite go as planned. I had hoped to record for you guys while going for a walk this afternoon. I had big plans to at least go for a walk around the neighborhood because the weather was so nice this morning. It was minus two. Stuff was melting. Like this is mid-January in Northern Alberta. So that's really, really unseasonably warm for here. But alas, <laughs> snow started coming down and it's colder now than it was this morning. It's like minus 12 and just, it's gonna keep getting colder. We're hitting a bit of a colder spell. So unfortunately we are back here. We're back in the office and let's talk about goals. Okay, so I'm a very goal-oriented person. If any of you know me in person, you'll know this to be true, or if you followed along the last few videos from last year, 
I believe that probably comes through <laughs> in my uh, competitive aspect, but um, I do have goals this year. So let's get to it because I have a few sort of bigger clusters. I've got, let's say I broke it down to three sort of main clusters. There are others, there are like a billion smaller goals also. I have some work goals, but I'm not going to get into those right here. So number one, okay, since we were at the gym this morning, I'll talk to you about my gym goals. So I don't like making number goals for myself for the fact that you can't force your body to perform beyond its capabilities. So for example, let's say I said, okay, I want to squat 400 pounds this year. Like just because I say it, I can't force my body to do it. So I have always been process oriented in every goal. You'll see this in my other goals as well. But for training, for example, I want to get all my workouts in consistently. I want to continue putting in the work, pushing myself. And I know from experience that results will eventually follow, but not according to the timeline that I choose for it. So I do have a good feeling about this year. So far, training has been going really, really well, but um, we'll see. It's a surprise, <laughs> yes, to all of us. So yeah, there's that. Um, what did I write down? Well, of course, I want to compete and medal again at Bench Worlds and do better. I want to get a gold medal, obviously. <laughs> That's the whole point. But um, I mean, there's so many things in competition. It depends on who shows up. It depends on how my training's been. You know, knock on wood. I stay healthy. Um, they're just a whole bunch of things. So of course that's the goal and I'll do everything that I can to get there, but there's only so much that's within my control here. So that is a goal. I would also like to compete an international three lift equipped meet because I had so much fun doing it last year. Uh, my first three lift equipped meet, uh, possibly NAPFs. I think those are in Panama this year in like August, I think, which would be pretty sweet. I'd love to do that. Heard great things about Panama, but I mean, and same with worlds. A lot of that also depends on the pandemic, right? Like travel is not quite what it used to be. It's not at all what it used to be. But even when we went to Vilnius, when we went to Lithuania to worlds, travel has changed a lot even since then. So I don't know. We'll see. Travel 2022. It's got to roll with the punches. <laughs> I don't have any influence there, unfortunately. So next up, let's talk about languages. So if you don't know, I speak more than one language. I grew up speaking German or I went to a German bilingual school at home. We always spoke English. Um, but I went on to study German language and literature in university. I used German original resources for my thesis, my master's thesis. And I married a German man and we spoke only German at home. So I am quite fluent in that language. I have also been learning Serbo-Croatian, or I'm not sure what the official name is now. It's like Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian, somewhere along those lines. It's, all, it's three languages, and there's there are slight differences between all three, between Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian. So I've been learning that language slash those languages. I've got tutors in Bosnia and Serbia. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm also learning French, so I've been taking a French course. And I've actually got two exams coming up tomorrow and the day after, and I will take you along for those because those are stressful, but also interesting maybe if you've never taken a correspondence language course or a distance language course. And I would like to relearn Yiddish. So in 2006, I went to Indiana and I spent a few weeks there learning Yiddish for Holocaust research. And it was an amazing experience. Uh, however, I have lost most of those skills. <laughs> I could still write a few words using the Hebrew alphabet or the Aleph base, but um, I've forgotten more than I would care to forget. So I would like to pick that up again also. I don't have a learning plan for that yet. That's sort of a nice to have language goal, but it's still a language goal. So anyway, I had kind of mentioned my tutors. So I'll get into this in more detail in another video, but I meet my tutors. I've got a tutor for French. I've got a tutor for Bosnian. Got a tutor for two tutors for Serbian at the moment. I've worked with other people as well in the past. Uh, I use a website called Italki, and I'll put. I think I have an affiliate link. I'll put that down below if I have one. Yeah. So we meet on Skype. So 
I can see them, they can see me, we talk, they can correct my grammar, they can give me textbooks to work on, and it's a lot of fun. I've met some really, really cool people through it, and I can ask all the questions about the culture that I want to, which is cool. Yeah, so those are my language, well, that's, that's not even a goal. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I haven't even said my goal. So my goal <laughs> is to study these languages consistently. And for me, consistently means at least one per week. Uh, this year so far in January, I've been doing four days a week. <laughs> this week I only have two days this week because I have my, I have an exam tomorrow and then Wednesday, but I have an oral exam tomorrow. So I didn't want to overload myself with too many lessons. As much fun as they are, there's still work. There's that, at least one a week. 2021, I ended up taking a few months off here and there, and I don't want to do that. I want to get into the habit of making that a priority because it's fun and it is very effective for me to have these Skype language classes. Also, so I told you I used the website italki. So last year, they gave me a little report card at the end of the year, or report card, but anyway, you can sign up on the website and get your report card and it tells you how much time you spent learning the language. So anyway, last year I spent 3,300 minutes learning and I think I can beat that this year. I have no idea where I'm at right now. <laughs> and I don't know if you can actually track that besides at the end of the year, but I'd like to beat that this year. And I think that's totally doable. Cause like I said, last year there were stretches of time where I did not do any tutoring. So I can improve, I can be better this year. So I will be better anyway. So last thing. content creation. So as you know, I have this self-imposed goal of the self-imposed challenge of vlogging every day for 30 days. So today is day two. And also, um, earlier at the very beginning of the blog, I said it was January 18th. That's not true. <laughs> it is the 17th. I saw that when I got to work today, I was like, Oh man, I thought I was doing so well, but yes. January 17th, day two of my vlog every day challenge. The reason I'm doing the challenge is, uh, I just heard a lot of creators say that they had gone through a spell where they were vlogging every day and they learned a lot through it. And I thought, well, you know, practice makes perfect or at least makes better. And I need all the practice I can get. And I also want to see what the viewers, what you all want to see, what you like seeing. So I will be making videos on a variety of subjects and let me know, um, leave comments, likes, um, subscribe, obviously, if you care to follow along and let me know what you're interested in seeing, what you like, what fell flat. Just let me know, give me feedback and, um, yeah, we'll see what comes out at the end of the 30 days. I have a lot of room to grow in photography also. Um, so that is on here as well. In terms of photography, there's nothing specifically I want to learn. I just want to improve. I want to get better. I want to hone in my instincts. And you know, every time I go for a, sh you know, do a shoot or go on a trip, I always come back with like a million regrets. I'm like, oh, why didn't I photograph that? Or, you know, video that, of course. So um, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement there. I will practice that also. Practice makes perfect. And one more thing regarding video, regarding content creation. So I signed up for the Lost the Blank, no, Lost Creators Academy. <laughs> so I signed up for that. And for me, that was a pretty big step because, well, for a few reasons. First of all, it's a, it was a pretty big financial commitment. So it's, you know, it, in, in my mind, I'm like spending that much money means that I'm actually seriously uh, serious about this and I'm taking it seriously. So, um, that's important for that. Um, there's also a whole community of creators, um, that is accessible after joining. So, you know, I've connected with a few of them already and hopefully I'll connect with some more and you know, there are places or not places, but you can ask for feedback as well and tips and, um, you know, collabs and everything, advice. So I think that will be exciting. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll help me along this 30 day challenge. Hopefully, you know, this will help, this will all help fast track me into becoming a better 
blogger, better videographer, better photographer, and all that stuff. <laughs> so, as you can see from all my goals, they're all very process oriented. None of them is very outcome oriented. Like it's not, you know, I will achieve A1 fluency in French by November 30th. Um, I know those are um, like smart goals, like specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based. Those are the caveats of being a smart goal. But for me, it's always been about the process. That's how I was raised. I was rewarded for studying, for putting in work and not for grades. And that really stuck with me. And for me, knowing myself these 30 some years, um, I know that's effective for me. That's motivating for me. And it helps me build good habits and good habits lead to good, good rewards usually. And uh, another thing I did want to mention also while we're on that is having a behavior based goal rather than an outcome based goal is that it allows the flexibility of the outcome because the outcome might not be what you had expected at the beginning and that's okay. You know, in a lot of cases, it'll either take you somewhere, somewhere new, somewhere that might be a better fit. In other cases, you'll end up learning about something else that you had no idea you didn't know, right? That happens to me all the time. And you know, it's all, to use a cliche, it's all about the journey and not the destination. Uh, I know that's cliche, but it, I find it applicable. I find it to be true in regard to goals as in regard to travel and anything really. Um, so yeah, that is my approach to goal setting and those are my goals for 2022. So, uh, on that note, I'm going to end this vlog for today and I will see you all tomorrow for day three. All right.